As you all know, we live in a late stage capitalist system. And as a result, billionaires are openly trying to buy elections through a number of methods, through direct campaign contributions, through super PACs, and of course, propagandistic ad buys like the ones that you see over and over and over again every single day during election seasons, which I'm sure you all enjoy very much. But here's one thing that they can't buy genuine enthusiasm and some billionaires had to learn this the hard way for example back in 2020 during the democratic party primary billionaire mike bloomberg was putting lots of money into his campaign and he was paying deputy field organizers 2500 dollars a month to canvas for him and even though that was admittedly a really good gig for broke college students it didn't necessarily produce the results that he'd hoped for and i say this because the la times reported that most of the canvassers that they talked to from his campaign were only doing it for the money and a lot of them didn't even support Bloomberg's candidacy. And the worst part was that some of them were even going rogue and campaigning for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren while they were getting paid to campaign for Bloomberg. And guess what? It seems like the same thing might actually be happening to Elon Musk after he invested more than $70 million into his pro-Trump super PAC called America PAC and basically took over ground operations for the Trump campaign, which was not the brightest idea from the Trump campaign, but they basically outsourced sourced field operations to Elon Musk, and now it may come back to bite them. So there's a problem with the canvassing. So as Reuters explains, Musk's America PAC is trying to ramp up efforts to reach low propensity voters after falling short of their daily objectives, which puts their main election objective in jeopardy if they don't reach this goal. And as a result, state leaders and even Musk himself are trying to increase the number of doors that they're knocking on so that way they can meet their goal and ultimately help Trump get elected. And as a result of this pressure campaign, the number of doors that they've knocked on has actually increased. But there's a huge problem. There is a very large percentage of canvassers who aren't actually knocking on doors, but they're saying that they did. And the number of America Pack canvassers that are reportedly doing this is so high. It could literally cost Trump the entire election. As Hugo Lowell of The Guardian reports, leaked America PAC data obtained by The Guardian shows that roughly 24% of the door knocks in Arizona and 25% of the door knocks in Nevada this week were flagged under its internal unusual survey logs, a metric used to determine faked doors. The Arizona data, for example, shows that out of 35,692 doors hit by 442 canvassers that are working for black Blitz canvassing in the America PAC operation on Wednesday, 8,511 doors were flagged under the unusual survey logs. The extent of the flagged doors in America PAC's operation underscores the risk of outsourcing a ground game program where paid canvassers are typically not as invested in their candidate's victory compared with volunteers or campaign staff. You don't say. Now, Musk's America PAC is emphatically denying that there's this level of fraud, and to be fair to them, it is a conspicuously high number, but The Guardian spoke to other auditors who said that the unusual activity logs were actually pretty good at detecting real fraud, and The Guardian themselves performed their own tests to determine whether or not Elon Musk's app was just overly sensitive and needed to be recalibrated, and they compared it to other apps, and turns out the app works because... The rate of suspected fakes for Musk's sidekick app was about the same as other canvassing apps when they did their test, meaning that this doesn't seem to be a mistake. The 25% fraud rate in Arizona and Nevada seems to be accurate, <laughs> which is insane. And when you look at specific activity that the app flagged as unusual, it doesn't take an expert to understand why the app is saying that the things that it's detecting might be fraud. Lowell continues, the unusual activity logs, for instance, showed a canvasser who was marked by GPS as sitting at a Gallo's on the trail restaurant half a mile away from the doors he was supposedly hitting in Globe, Arizona. Another canvasser was recorded marking voters as not home two blocks away from that apartment. And that's just a couple of examples of unusual activity that's being flagged. But as you can tell, it's being flagged for good reason, because those instances of supposed door knocking were pretty sus. But listen, regardless of how good you actually pay door knockers, Elon Musk is paying them anywhere between 20 and $40 an hour, which is good, but it's still not fun. So it's easy to understand why people would fake it to make it if they're not actually invested in the campaign and don't believe in what they're doing. I'll admit, I did the same thing. 
when I was working in retail, we were given like 2000 flyers to advertise some sale and we were supposed to place them on doors. And I took 500 of them and we didn't even have to knock on the doors. We just had to leave flyers on the porches, but I hated doing it. After a couple of blocks, uh, you know, it, it was exhausting. You go to apartment complexes, you go up the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs in that same complex. I was yelled at by a lady for suspiciously delivering flyers. This was before the tattoos and the beard. So I don't know if she thought I was trying to break into their cars. I was just trying to deliver these shitty flyers. So you know what I said? I said, fuck it. So I decided to go to a Starbucks, threw all of the remaining flyers in the trash, which is most of them, ordered myself a coffee and then sat in my car and browsed my phone for a couple of hours. And then I went back and said that I delivered all of them. Nobody asked a single question. Now, this is something that I think is pretty common. And you can avoid this by paying for extra labor and creating a sort of buddy system, assuming people are going to keep each other honest. Or you can also conduct audits. And Amer America PAC leaders, they're trying to do just that. The problem is that they can't get enough people to conduct audits because, again, we're two weeks away from the election. So finding a qualified person who's honest for a two-week job is a pretty tall order. But that raises another question. Why not fire the people who are lying? And to be fair, they have fired the people who are lying, but the problem is that they only fired them for the most egregious violations. For example, one guy, he was fired for supposedly hitting almost 800 doors in five days, but every single one of them was literally flagged as suspicious, which is hilarious to me. But most people, they're not gonna be that brazen and they're probably gonna knock on some doors, then fudge the numbers a little bit in other places. So the question is why not fire them too so that way 100% of the doors that they say they're knocking on are being knocked on. Well, as Lowell explains, part of the problem with paid canvassing in general is that canvassing vendors are disincentivized to fire canvassers the more doors they hit because the vendors are paid by the door. If the doors are not hit, the vendor owes money back to the client or owes that many free doors. For America Pack, there is further disincentive for vendors to fire canvassers who might only be frauding one door out of every 10, effectively someone who just cuts corners because the labor supply of canvassers is diminished this late in the cycle and hiring a replacement is increasingly difficult to people familiar with the situation said. So it's a real conundrum for them and it's understandable why they would deny that fraud is this big of a problem because if word gets out that you can fudge the numbers and they probably aren't gonna fire you, that could create an even bigger problem if people realize that, oh, we can just sit in restaurant parking lots and get paid, awesome. Now, since they can't confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt if somebody is fudging the numbers, they probably don't have cause to fire them. And furthermore, is it really worth it to fire them if 90% of their door knocks are legitimate? Are you really gonna replace them and possibly get somebody who's gonna do only 50%? So this is what happens when an entire campaign is astroturfed and there's no real enthusiasm. But in the meantime, they're trying to hire more people to actually knock on doors. But this desire to hire people quickly has sounded the alarms for Republicans who are now worried what the hell is happening. And they're questioning whether or not Musk might actually have screwed over Donald Trump by taking over field operations, as this new Republic article points out. And they go on to quote a GOP mega donor who told Rolling Stone, why isn't the army already in place in response to news that America Back was still trying to hire canvassers two weeks before the election? Furthermore, some members of Trump's inner circle are also worried about the campaign's over-reliance on Musk's America Pack. Although Trump is apparently ignoring red flags because momentarily he likes Elon Musk. We'll see if he still likes him after this election. But in all fairness, America PAC does have people working for them who actually do care about getting Trump elected. So I don't wanna discount the real enthusiasm that does exist. There are people who are trying to put in the work to get Trump elected. The problem is that even for those people, Elon Musk is inadvertently making it harder for them to do their jobs as well. The Washington Post actually talked to one woman who was canvassing for Donald Trump through America PAC and she explains that it was a nightmare. Quote, the mobile app she used to map her route and know which home she should visit kept glitching. Several times it directed her to knock on the door of a house with blue lawn signs endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris. Most of her knocks so far that day had received no response and the few voters who answered were either undecided or uninterested in talking. And the article says that she was actually discouraged after canvassing for about three and a half hours because she was getting yelled at 
by people who don't like Donald Trump because the app was presumably giving her bad data on who to actually contact. But ironically, this canvasser who actually wants to help Donald Trump was fired by America back after she got into a dispute with them over pay. We don't know the specifics. I don't know if she was stiffed, but the reason why she's still doing it is because she was hired by a different vendor who contracts with America Pack. So one of the few people we're talking to here that actually want to help Elon Musk get Trump elected, they were fired. They were mistreated, presumably. Again, we don't know, but it's just funny. And even they're complaining, this is pretty difficult. But I mean, again, even though you're being paid 20 to $40 an hour, it becomes discouraging real quick if that's your experience every single day. So if this is the experience of somebody who believes in what they're doing, it's easy to see why others who don't believe are just taking the money and then parking in a restaurant for a couple of hours. But another reason why they're still desperate to find canvases this late in the game, in part, is thanks to Elon Musk himself. The Washington Post continues, in July, America Pack fired two of its initial vendors as they were ramping up their work, leading the committee to start over just months before the election. A few weeks later, the committee fired another vendor that had been brought on to lead canvassing efforts in Arizona and Nevada after the initial round of firing, said another person familiar with the decisions. And this isn't surprising because we've all seen the way that he's run Twitter into the ground. Now, the reasons why he's fired vendors range from them not being transparent enough for him to him accusing them of grifting, which, to be fair to Elon Musk, is a possibility, but he's not really the best person to accuse of that. Either way, it's already hard enough to find people in field work, but when Elon Musk keeps hitting the reset button and taking the entire operation back to square one, that is going to make things even harder for the people who actually are there to do a good job. But putting aside his America pack for a moment, Musk is trying to find different ways to use his money to help Trump. For example, he tweeted that he's giving away $47 to every single person that gets somebody to sign his swing state petition, presumably so he can collect their voter data. Now, he sweetened the pot by announcing that he'd also be giving away $1 million per day to a person in a battleground state who signs his petition. But here's the thing. They don't necessarily have have to be a Republican to win the money. So as MSNBC legal correspondent Katie Fang points out, so if a whole bunch of Democrats sign Elon's petition, then he could end up paying them $1 million and even those winners end up voting for Kamala Harris? And the answer to that question is yes, it's plausible. And if that's the case, Musk could be unknowingly giving millions of dollars to people who despise Donald Trump. And this isn't necessarily even going to do anything to help get the vote out for Donald Trump because you can't pay people to vote, but you can pay them to sign a petition. And he's banking on this translating into actual enthusiasm and votes for Donald Trump when there's no evidence that that's going to be the case. They're probably just going to take the money and run. Or if they take the money, they were already going to vote for Donald Trump. So this just feels meaningless. But I mean, it goes back to him thinking that he can generate enthusiasm for Donald Trump with his wealth when it doesn't work that way. If the enthusiasm is there, it's going to be there. You can't create it because you have money and you can't buy enthusiasm for people. This is something that billionaires like Elon Musk and Mike Bloomberg continuously fail to understand. But there's one more sign that Elon Musk's America PAC is as incompetent as reports seem to indicate. So one canvasser told the Washington Post anonymously in an unnamed battleground state that during their training session at a field office, they were instructed to not try to convince undecided voters to support Donald Trump and were instead told to focus their efforts on making sure that Trump supporters vote early. I'm going to repeat that. They're not trying to convince undecideds. They're just trying to make sure that the people who already committed to vote for Donald Trump are actually going to vote early. That, my friends, is not a very good idea. That is wasted energy. Now, we don't know if this field office is an outlier, but if other canvassers are actually prioritizing this and leaders are saying, focus on getting out the early vote for Trump and not convincing undecideds, let me tell you, it would be a catastrophic error for Trump's campaign. So if Trump ends up losing this election, there's going to be a lot of pissed off Republicans pointing the finger at Elon Musk and for damn good reason.